This is a unit movement demonstration for the prototype of the Pacific Islands Campaign Guam game. We're looking at the prototype user interface as of the end of May 2010. Um, this is a test scenario that I've loaded up uh, with some units from the scenario called the Seizure of the Arote Peninsula, uh, this area right here, this peninsular area. Uh, the first step in moving a unit in this uh, prototype application is to click on the hex with the unit. So we'll click around a bit. I've now clicked on a hex with the unit. Uh, this highlights the hex. Next, select the move option from the unit menu uh, or type control M on the keyboard. Note that in this case the move menu item is disabled. Uh, the reason for that is that the game is not currently in a movement phase. Uh, we are currently in the U.S. reorganization phase. So let's go ahead and phase the game into U.S. movement. Okay, note how the uh, menu item is now enabled. Uh, when you select a unit to move, um, a few things happen here in the user interface. The game changes the mouse cursor. Obviously we've got a hand mouse cursor at this time. And it displays the unit's movement footprint. Um, that is, the, the game highlights, as we can see here, all the hexes the unit can move to, taking into account the unit's movement capabilities, the terrain, and ultimately, hexes occupied or controlled by enemy forces. Um, now we're looking at a prototype, and this is just proof of concept code, so there are some obvious inconsistencies in the movement footprints displayed in this demonstration. One being that uh, the movement footprint uh, is not limited by the enemy units uh, or by the, uh, the hexes controlled by the enemy units. Also, even ignoring enemy units, there are some hexes that we should be able to enter, such as 2005, um, that we are unable to enter because it, the proof of concept uses fairly naive code. Okay, note how the mouse cursor changes to indicate whether a hex on the map is in the footprint or not. So in footprint, out of footprint, in, out, out, in, etc. Uh, I'll click on a hex to complete the move. Okay, the game moves the unit, it changes the mouse cursor back to normal, and it hides the movement footprint. Okay, now that we've moved the unit, note also that the game will not allow the uh, unit to move again this turn. Um, so we see that the unit move command is disabled. We go to a, a, move, a unit that we have not moved, and we do have it available. We've moved it, and now it's no longer available. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cycle the game to the next phase. We do have one unit left that can complete a movement. But once I advance to the next phase, note that, again, the unit move command is disabled. So the game has an awareness, uh, the beginnings of an awareness of what things should happen when. Okay, I plan to add several features in the future to improve on what we have seen here. I'll replace the proof of concept movement footprint generation code with some modified A star code. That'll give us the pathing to let us know that we can actually go around obstacles to actually get to a, a destination hex. I hope to include drag and drop code um, so that instead of having to enter a movement mode where we click on another hex, we can simply drag and drop a unit. I think that will make things uh, uh, the game much quicker to play. I also want to explore making movement the default action when the game is in the movement phase so that if we were to be in a movement phase, I think that just clicking on a unit that's capable of movement should change the mouse cursor, should display the movement footprint, and allow you to complete a move. Uh, again, not having to enter the mode, having the mode be on by default when you're in the movement phase is definitely going to speed up gameplay. That, uh, that concludes the demonstration.